Hello, I'm Tara Schroeder. I'm the Education Coordinator for Green Mountain Conservation Group. And today for our Nature Story and Discovery Time, I'm going to be reading a book called Over and Under the Snow. And this is a scholastic book by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. And it's one of my favorite books to read in the winter time. Um, if any of you are like me, it's fun to go exploring in the snow and see all the stories that our animal friends leave behind and find out who's been in our backyards. So after the story, we're gonna take a look in Green Mountain Conservation Group's backyard on our Blue Heron Trail system and see who's been out and about. Over and under the snow. Over the snow I glide, into woods frosted fresh and white. Over the snow a flash of fur, a red squirrel disappears down a crack. Where did he go? Under the snow, Dad says. Do you see the squirrel tail? Under the snow is a whole secret kingdom where the smallest forest animals stay safe and warm. You're skiing over them now. And there's a squirrel and a furrow underneath the snow. Over the snow I glide past beech trees, rattling leftover leaves and strong silent pines that stretch to the sky. On a high branch, a great horned owl keeps watch. Under the snow, a tiny shrew dodges columns of ice. It follows a cool tunnel along the moss out of sight. Hmm, I wonder why he wants to be out of sight. Could it be the owl? Hmm. Look, Dad says, tracks. Tracks always tell a story. Over the snow, a deer has crossed our path. Deep hoof prints punch through the crust, up the hill, under a tree. An oval of melted snow tells the story of a good night's sleep. Under the snow, deer mice doze. They huddle up, cuddle up against the cold in a nest of feathers and fur. So you can see the little mice in their nest under the snow. And over the snow, you can see where the deer bedded down overnight. Over the snow I climb, digging in my edges so I don't slide back down. Under the snow, voles scratch through slippery tunnels, searching for morsels from summer feasts. So moles, voles, shrews, and mice, all kind of similar. I like to go under the snow and hide. There's lots of things like to eat them. Over the snow I swoosh, down, down, faster, faster, down, faster, faster, whoops. Uh-oh. Under the snow, a snowshoe hare watches from a shelter of spruce. Almost invisible, she smooths her fur, a coat of winter white. Now here's a little girl skiing, and whoops, she almost falls, but look, see if you can find our snowshoe hare. Very hard to find here, all white to match the snow, so that other animals don't, don't see her. Over the snow I glide, past reeds where tadpoles play tag in springtime. Under the snow, fat bullfrogs snooze. They dream of sun-warmed days back when they had tails. You can see all the frogs in their deep sleep underneath the pond in the mud. Over the snow I stand and stare, little mountains in the marsh. Under the snow, beavers gnaw on aspen bark, settled in for supper. Can they hear my tummy rumbling too? So beaver are actually active all winter and kind of cuddle up in their lodges. Over the snow, stop, a sound. We stand like statues carved in ice till a bushy-tailed fox ste steps from the thicket, tips his ear to the ground, listens, listens, listens still. and leaps out onto the snow after an invisible dinner. If his paws scratch away to find the mouse, he heard scritch, scritch, scratching along underneath, under the snow. They have amazing sense of hearing. There's a the little mouse. 
They can hear deep under the snow, just like owls and other predators. Over the snow I glide, a full moon lights my path to supper. Under the snow, a chipmunk wakes for a meal. Bedroom, kitchen, hallway, his house under my feet. As a chipmunk wakes up to get his little stash of nuts. Over the snow I climb one last hill. Bonfire smoke rises, warm hands, hot cocoa, hot dogs, sizzling on pointed sticks. Under the snow, a black bear snores, still full of October blueberries and trout. There's the hibernating black bear. Over the snow, the fire crackles and sparks shoot up to the stars. I lick my sticky marshmallow from my lips and lean back with heavy eyes. Shadows dance in the flames. Under the snow, a queen bumblebee drowses away December all alone. She'll rule a new colony in the spring. Over the snow I glide home on tired legs. Clouds whisper down feathery soft flakes. So it's starting to snow. And she's tired from a long day of skiing and exploring the woods. Under the covers I snuggle deep and drift into dreams. Of cuddling deer mice and slumbering frogs, hungry beavers and tunneling voles, drowsy bears and busy squirrels, and a secret kingdom under the snow. <clears throat> this book is great too because it has a whole back section that tells you all about the different animals mentioned in the story. And different aspects of those animals. So a great book. Um, so we're gonna go outside now, but I wanted to share with you too that our trails are open here at Green Mountain Conservation Group. Um, we have the Blue Heron Trail that goes along the Ospie River and around our vernal pool. And we have uh, the Natural Area Trail, which is just down the road in Effingham. Um, and both trails are open right now, and you're welcome when you come to the Blue Heron House, our office building, our conservation center, to grab one of these great guides to animal tracks. It's a pocket guide put out by the New Hampshire Fish and Game, and it has all types of tracks and track patterns, and it has a, um, a ruler on the edge where you can actually measure out the size of your tracks. So you're welcome to grab one of these. They'll be in our kiosk and become a track detective yourself. So come on outside and join me and we'll go look at some tracks and see what we find today. All right, are you ready to be animal detectives with us today? We're right outside the GMCG Conservation Center at the Great Blue Heron Trail. And this trail leaves from the right-hand side of our parking lot as you're looking at the building. So you can just park in the parking lot and come on over and start the loop trail. It's pretty short, it's about a, um, I don't know, a quarter of a mile or so. Very short, great for little ones. So we've got our first set of tracks already. We didn't even start the trail yet. And this set of tracks are made by a white mouse. And this mouse will hop, 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 hop. And its footprints are kind of like two, by two, by two. And on our card, which you wanna get one of these at our kiosk before you head out, you'll see there are track patterns on the left-hand side and then the actual tracks on the right-hand side. And for our little white-footed mouse, it's a white-footed mouse, you have those two by two tracks. And actually, as they jump, just like squirrels and rabbits, their back feet come in front of their front feet. So it looks like this, and I'm gonna try and do this and not fall down or hurt myself. <clears throat> and you can practice this at home too. So they look like this, but they'll actually jump like that. So their track pattern will be front feet and then back feet in front of the front feet. So that's how they move. So look for that pattern in the snow. And then, if you need to, 
you can take your little measuring tool on the side of your card and just measure out how far the tracks are apart. So these ones are not very far apart, about an inch apart. And you know, they're not very wide either. They're about an inch wide. So it's a very small critter. So we have a white-tailed mouse here for this one. All right, we're gonna move on to our next set of tracks. Come with me. All right, here we are at our next story of what happened in the snow here with our critters. And these tracks are not super, super fresh. Um, they're melted out a little bit, but you can still see who has been through here. And what we did was we tracked a fox, a red fox maybe, or a gray fox from just down here on the trail. It had crossed across our trail and came out through here and went out this way and then across the vernal pool. And fox, like other um, canines, other dog species um, and, and cats too, are called street walkers. And they don't waste any energy. And what you'll see is them walking in the snow in a really straight line. Although this one, it looks like was really interested and zigzagged a little bit through here because there was another critter, some kind of hair, either a cottontail or a snowshoe here, came through here and hop, hop, hop around down here. And the fox tracks cross right over the hare's tracks. And if you come down close, I can show you the street walking pattern of our fox here, and there's one of the tracks. And one cool thing about the fox and other dog species is that they usually show their toenails, um, whereas a cat will retract their claws and those won't show up in their tracks. So these tracks are from our fox heading out that way. And then these tracks that come right down the hill and have that hopping pattern, that two by two, where the back feet come in front of the front feet is from our hair. So I measured the tracks, although they're a little melted out. And if they're about five inches, the back feet, which this is, it says it's a snowshoe hair. Um, three and a half inches or so would be the cottontail rabbit. Now, because of where we are and the habitat that's around us, I'm more inclined to think it's a cottontail rabbit versus a snowshoe here, but it could be. So that's what we have going on here. And you can just follow the tracks with me for a little bit and we'll point them out as we go. You can see the claws are registering up here or making imprints in the snow for the fox. And then it goes right out here. See how it walks so straight? And you can imagine its body is really narrow. It's only from here to here, right? This narrow, it's a tiny fox moving out across our vernal pool. And then our hair goes on its way, this way, and back up towards the trail. It's a really cool story here. The animals probably with their extra special, you know, extra great sense of smell, smelled each other and one was checking out the other, probably the fox checking out the hare. All right, let's go find our next spot. All right, guess what? Our last animal today that we're gonna look at um, that has visited our trails is the white-tailed deer. And this is a little fawn, um, just to show you what they look like. And we started tracking this deer right around here. It had been walking right along our trail, right along our path here. And you can see where it's left its hoof prints right in the snow. And you can also see that this one's gait, as opposed to that little fox, is a little bit bigger. You know, or, or stride, I'm talking about its stride. Its stride's a little bit bigger, right? As opposed to our fox, whose stride was a little bit smaller, made by a smaller animal. So deer, big long legs, and they have their hooves, their two little hooves, that'll make that imprint in the snow. Sometimes if it's really deep snow, you'll see an extra set of indentations back here from their dew claws, which help them get a good grip. And this one went right along here. I'm gonna have you follow me this time. Went right along here into the wood. No, 
know, you look when you see deer tracks, if you start to follow them and figure out what the story is behind them and where they went, you might find a deer bed where they've melted away the snow overnight and put it down under some um, you know, conifers, like um, fir trees or spruce. This one came right back across our trail right here. It's going this way. And guess what? It liked our bridge, so it used our bridge. Let me go for our bridge. See, there's the two hook marks. down to the Ospi River. So another great place to go looking for tracks and make sure you have an adult with you as near water bodies, right? Animals just like us, they need food, water, and shelter. So that's an excellent place to look for animal sign and animal tracks. And you can be your own nature detective and wildlife detective in your backyard. All right, I hope you enjoyed your time with us today. We'll see you again next time for Nature Story and Discovery Time. Thanks a lot for joining us.